In this module, we will learn to configure and generate a bill of materials for procurement. We will look at both the conventional report type bill of materials and the active bond document, which provides an interactive view of supplier information. Through either method, the bill of materials can then be generated in various file formats, including Excel and PDF. We will open the content vault and place top emitting LEDs from King Bright. We will place a green and an orange LED on our schematic, just to make our schematic a bit less boring. Then, we will complete the circuit. Just to increase the quantity, we will duplicate the LED circuit twice using copy and paste. Lastly, we will annotate the components. As we select components, we will see its parameters listed in the properties panel. Notice the differences between the parameters which were defined within the libraries itself. Since the LEDs were placed from the content vault, they have the most comprehensive list of parameters, including manufacturer and part number. The passives and header placed from the default libraries do not have those parameters, since they serve merely as generic base components. Bill of materials heavily rely on these parameters. Hence, it is highly recommended for components to be created with a standard list of parameters, such as internal part number, manufacturer, and manufacturer part number. We will talk about component and library creation later in this training. For now, we will add the crucial manufacturer and part number parameters to the resistors and capacitor. For the resistors, the manufacturer is Vichy, and part number as the following. For the capacitor, the manufacturer is Kemet, and part number as the following. A conventional bill of materials can then be created by going to Reports, Bill of Materials. The main area of the window shows the list of components within our project. Columns can be moved by grabbing and dragging its header to the intended location. The bottom left pane lists the component's parameters. We can show or hide parameters on our component list using the show checkboxes in this pane. We can show the part number's parameter by simply checking on this checkbox. Notice that some of the components are grouped. They are grouped by parameters listed on the top left pane of this window. Currently, they are grouped based on comment and footprint parameters of the component. We can configure this grouping parameter list simply by using a drag and drop from or to the all parameter list beneath it. We can then export the component list above into several file formats, such as Excel, CSV, PDF, and TXT. As a proof of concept, we will choose to export it as an Excel format and check on Open Export It. Then, Click on export on the bottom left corner and we will choose to save it to our desktop. The component list will then be exported as Excel, exactly as how it is shown previously. Bill of materials can be exported using a template as well. 
This time around, we will choose to add a copy of this export to the project folder. We will choose one of the default templates within the dropdown and click on export again. Notice that this time around, the Excel document would have project information, system parameters like date and timestamps, and component parameters enabled in the template. Let's return to Altium Designer to view the Bill of Materials configuration window. At the bottom of the parameter list shows the multiple suppliers and their parameters. Once again, only the LEDs have these information as supplier links were not added to the other components during their library creation. When working with supplier links, it is generally advantageous to be able to rank suppliers and obtain a total board price. This is where the active bound document can be used to facilitate the transition of supply chain information and choice from designers to procurement. Like any documents in Altium Designer, the active bound document can be added through the right click menu on the project in Projects panel. Please note that we can only have one active bound document per project. The main view of the active BOM is the BOM items list. This list shows a tabular view of the components detected in the PCB design project. Additional BOM items such as fasteners or ESD bag can also be directly added to this list through the add new then custom item command. There are three view modes available to display the BOM items, which can be toggled using the three icons above the list. The first mode is the flat view, which shows a row per component. Next is the base view, where a row is assigned for each unique component. In this view, components are grouped by parameters defined in the properties panel. Lastly, the consolidated view is used when the project has variants to display a consolidated BOM for all variants. Line numbers can also be added to the list by clicking on the line icon. When an item is selected, the supply chain configuration interface will be shown at the bottom of the window. In this view, each row is referred to as a solution. Each solution is a specific manufacturer part. The components in your design will access the solutions through various methods depending on the source of the component. If the components are placed from the content vault, the solutions will be brought from their part choice list defined within the vault. In our case, this applies to our LEDs. Components placed from local libraries, such as our resistors and capacitor, would usually have manufacturer-related parameters, like manufacturer and manufacturer part number. Instead of manually adding supplier links per part, the active bomb can search for the manufacturer part based on these parameters. This is done by clicking on Edit beside Manufacturer link in the Properties panel. Once we have defined the component parameters which correspond to the manufacturer and manufacturer part number, we can then hit the Refresh button in the bomb items view. We will then see solutions being sourced for components with matching manufacturer details, which in our case would be the resistors and capacitor. Lastly, for components that do not have manufacturer details within their component parameters, solutions would have to be added via a manual solution method within the active bomb. In our case, it would be our header. As a quick recap, we have seen the three methods on how solutions can be associated with components in our project. Regardless of the three methods used, once the solution has been associated, suppliers which carry the solution will be listed in the active bomb. The active bomb will aggregate live parts information from external suppliers, funneling back information such as price, stock levels, and minimum order quantities 
back into this document. By default, the suppliers are automatically ranked based on price and stock level. However, these ranks can be manually changed through the drop-down within each supplier's box. Generally, we would have a preferred list of suppliers to source our components. We can define our favorite suppliers list through the Properties panel. In this window, we can enable or disable suppliers. We can also change the supplier priority as well. By checking on the Use Supplier Priority checkbox, the suppliers will be automatically ranked based on this list instead of price and stock level. The Active Bomb also includes a comprehensive set of bomb checks that are automatically performed each time the bomb is updated. This feature can be found within the Properties panel. It will process the bomb items and check for violations associated with design items and part choices. These checks will ensure that our components are met correctly with its solutions, are in stock, and are well within the target price. After assigning the solutions and corresponding supplier and its ranks, we can now view the calculated price per board and the order price in the Properties panel. Upon changing the board's production quantity, the price per board will be affected as well, since it takes price breaks into account. As expected, the order price is simply the multiplication of the production quantity and price per board. Currency can also be changed through its drop-down for price localizations. All the defined supplier information, along with the required production quantity and localized currency, will then be reflected in the bomb items list. The columns shown in this list can be configured through the Columns tab in the Properties panel. In this tab, we can toggle the visibility of columns which represent PCB, Database, Document, and Part Provider's parameters. Once we have the necessary information in our BOM items list, we can then generate the BOM report through Reports, Bill of Materials. This report can also be generated through an outjob document, where the active bomb will be used as the data source. In this module, we utilize both the conventional bill materials and the active bomb document to produce the bill materials report. In the next module, we will learn to use the outjob document where we will configure documentation, fabrication, and assembly outputs.